Hello, welcome to a video that will cover the solutions for test number four on sections 6.4, 7.1, 7.2, and 7.3. So this test took place on Friday, April 8th, and um, I feel we should do a video solution since we won't have much time during class to review this test given all the disruptions we've had to our schedule. So let's start with uh, number one. So number one is asking us to figure out how many gallons of oil spilled at time t equals 10. And we're given the rate. So what we have to understand is that we can represent the, um, we can use integrals net change as the main concept here. See, if I were to take the integral of my rates from 0 to 10, That'll give me the total amount of oil spilled from t equals 0 to t equals 10. Now, this is a rather tough integral to do by hand. Um, and actually, I'm not sure if we can do that by hand. So <clears throat> we're just going to simply uh, place in our calculator right now. And actually, um, let me rephrase that. It's the total change of oil spilled, not total amount. The total amount will incorporate the initial value. <clears throat> so, we have to use our calculator here. So, our total change is um, 6,052, but we add 2,000, so we get 8,052 <clears throat> for. Um, the total amount of oil spilled for number one. Now for number two, what we're going to want to do is go back to the calculator. Because there's six parts, I'm going to just type in this equation because I'm going to have to use it over and over again. X minus one, cosine, that's X squared, divided by four. And make sure you're in radian mode. So now, if they're asking for the velocity and the acceleration, <clears throat> that's just going to be V of 3. And acceleration is simply the derivative of velocity. So I'll be doing, I'll be putting 3 into the uh, derivative of the velocity to get the acceleration of 3. So again, we just use our calculator. Very simple. Um, since I have um, the velocity function stored as y1, if I go alpha trace, locate y1, plug in 3, and there we go. Negative 1.256. I did ask for three decimal places. So make sure you do follow that on the AP. We care about that as well. So make sure you put three decimal places when you're in the uh, calculator portion for response. There's no units here, so we don't have to worry about that. But if there are units, you got to label those as well. The AP does care about that. Then for the acceleration, <clears throat> we need to take the derivative of our velocity function. So I'm going to go alpha window, select n deriv. We're going to take respect to x. And our function, of course, is y1. And we're plugging in 3. So we get negative 2.962. So negative 2.962. So I don't know how you would actually do these by hand, uh, but please don't. Um, and I did advise you guys um, in person and um, on the test itself that, um, you know, remember when you can use your calculator, you can use your cover both questions on this page. Just be make sure you're clear where you're calculating using correct math, math, math notation. Um, 
know, like obviously I'm calculating the derivative for the acceleration. I was calculating the integral for number one, so I had the, the right notation there. So yeah, you, you wouldn't want to do this analytically if I don't tell you to. Now for part B, that's more conceptual. <clears throat> Your speed is increasing when velocity and acceleration are the same sign. You're decreasing when velocity and acceleration are opposite signs. Well, velocity and acceleration are both negative here. So, you know, velocity is going to the left, acceleration is moving in that direction. You're definitely increasing. And this would be your justification that velocity and acceleration are opposite signs. Uh, <clears throat> find the position. Now, this requires a bit of work. So, just like number one, when you do the integral, it's net change. So, change in position. from t equals 0 to t equals 3, so we can be the integral from 0 to 3 of our velocity function times dt. So we're going to use the calculator again. But we do have the initial position, which is 5. So we're going to add 5 to our answer. So let's find <coughs> the change of position first. So alpha window. From 0, 3, and alpha trace y1. So apparently that's a change of position. So you went backwards, negative 0.24, whatever units. So we simply have to add that to 5. So negative 2.42 is a change of position. So s of 5 minus s of 0, sorry, s of 3 minus s of 0 equals 0.242, and s of 3 was 5. No, sorry, I'm really getting this mess, mess, messed up. s of 3 <laughs> minus 5 equals negative 0.242, so you want to add 5 to that, and you get 4.758. So that's your position at time t equals 3. Now, because your position is to the right, we're to the right because it's positive, right? Oh, sorry, that's going to be for part D. Um, part D is easy. We're moving left. That's simply because velocity is negative at t equals 3. That's all. <clears throat> and then for part e, okay. Yes, yeah, so now I have to consider position. So at t equals 3, we're to the right of the origin and moving left. So if you just Think about it, if you're to the right of a point and you're moving left, you're going towards it. And your justification is right there. <clears throat> Find the total distance. So when we talk about integrals net change, and you have you know function kind of looks like this, where your integral of that function will be the net area. Where anything below the x-axis is negative, anything above is positive. So total distance is we're not really interested in that area, we're interested in total area. So we're looking to do the absolute value of our um, velocity graph. So we're going from 0 to 4, absolute value of the velocity graph, times d, <coughs> excuse me, times dt. Again, we're going to use our calculator. So don't do this by hand, this is crazy. And actually, I could just repeat that, change that to 4. I'll have to insert an absolute value, or I can just go abs alpha trace y1. That's it.
You just kind of wait. It takes a little while. Before I go get a cup of coffee. Okay, there we go. 3.525. So that's the total distance it travels. Because remember, it, it counts any negative area as positive. So that's why we do the absolute value. So <clears throat> that's how you do the first page. I know some of you didn't do so hot in the first page, and I think some of you are trying to do stuff by hand or didn't understand conceptually. Hopefully, uh, the video in the first page kind of clears that up. Okay, now we're going to move on to um, the other parts. But before I do that, because uh, this video is going to be really, really long, I'm going to um, stop this video and start a new one.